Hey cats, it's your midsole man Ed Budd here. Today I have for you a 100 mile long term review on the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 12. A shoe of perhaps higher quality than the price suggests. I'm glad to say that this version of the shoe brings the Boston back to what we expect. Let's get into it. Thanks for tuning in people, it is always appreciated. Do help to get the channel out to more people by hitting that subscribe button, but also giving this video a thumbs up like. You can also help the channel on a more ad hoc basis if you give us a super thanks as well. Danke schön. 100 miles or 160 kilometers down in the Boston 12. This is a shoe I purchased with my own Earth credits. I think it was like 119 pounds. Got a bit of a discount on it, and it's certainly worth that price. My pair in a UK 11 comes in at 299 grams, which is about 10.5 ounces. I've got about 38 millimeters of heel stack in my size, and there's about 33 millimeters up front. In my opinion, this shoe is exactly what the Nike Zoom Fly 5 should be, really. It's a more durable interpretation of those lighter race shoes that we have from all the different companies. It's something that you can just bust out on a more frequent basis. It's a very versatile model for any run. Getting to my review, I'll start with the upper. I have to say the upper has held up really nicely over 100 miles. Pretty much nowhere anywhere. There's a little bit of scuffing on those sort of fabric lace loops here. They make up the eyelet chain on the Boston 12, but it's pretty marginal really. I found that it's really easy to get a good fit in this shoe. You barely have to try. You can get a nice lockdown over the top of the foot without too much lace pressure and any of that lace pressure is negated by the padding that we've got running through the middle of the tongue and that padding runs just high enough up the tongue to stop any pressure from where you tie the actual laces together. You don't get any of that pain sort of with the laces digging into the foot. I have been using a runner's knot with this shoe and the laces are pretty much spot on for that. I have to say the upper looks completely brand new really. You would never tell it was 100 miles into this one. A quick clean up just to do the review today, but I haven't really babied this shoe. It's been out in some pretty atrocious weather here in the UK over the winter. There's been some testing conditions and there's no staining or sort of deterioration of the upper anywhere. Bit of minimal wear just inside the heel collar here, but it's like microscopic. You can barely even tell you've got a really look for it. I have to say it's hard to fault this upper at all actually. It's one of the best Adidas uppers that they've released. Far better than that very strange one that we had in the Prime X Strung 2. The midfoot wrap works very well. It's got this sort of felty material inside that kind of wraps around them. and this heel counterless design also works really kind of locks your heel back into the shoe. There's a sling type design here. We've seen in a few other Adidas shoes, but it really does work well. I can't say I've experienced any heel slip whatsoever and no discomfort, no rubbing, no blisters in this one. The toe box reinforcement around here, I think is gonna provide the shoe with a little bit more longevity in terms of the upper. At this point, it's just proving to be a very, very usable upper. It just gets the job done. I think I'll stick with my score of about 2.8 out of three for the upper after 100 miles just wish that it was a touch lighter perhaps they can use some thinner materials for that midfoot wrap next time around just to lessen the weight midsole 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 now so there's a couple of different midsole materials here they have softened up over time the more sort of use you put into the shoe the better and better those midsole foams start to feel. The Light Strike Pro stuff that they've used here in the sort of mid to forefoot area comes in at about a sure 26, and the Light Strike 2.0, which is a little bit firmer in the heel, is about 38. I would suggest though, if you get this shoe, give it a darn good pounding over a few initial miles and it loosens up a little bit. I found it works really well on any sort of pace, really easy runs, recovery stuff, doing some steady efforts, longer runs. Maybe not my ideal choice if you're doing some reps or intervals but it's a great midsole here it really does pretty much everything you want it to do i can see people using this as a very versatile model during their half marathon or full marathon training works really for my easier paces around about 8 30 to 8 15 per mile but the combo of foams here just facilitates any pace really or any foot strike as well i think 
almost any runner can get something out of this one. I would suggest though, after a little while, it just feels a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more compressive. Though I think the shoe has a little bit more pop this time around from that expanded amount of Light Strike Pro. Just a little bit more to it, I suppose, than some of the other plated models that we have that aren't sort of super shoes. The energy rod system here in the midsole provides just enough rigidity to add a little bit of pop and make the feeling of toe off a little bit more energetic. It's certainly a better shoe than the Nike Zoom Fly 5. That's like a pale facsimile really of the faster Nike race shoes. I think the change from the 10 and 11 here is so drastic. I couldn't get on with those models whatsoever, but a new version of Light Strike in the heel and some extra Light Strike Pro up front have really elevated the Boston 12 for me. I can recommend this to just about anybody, really. I think you can all get something out of it. It's a usable model for any type of session, maybe aside from the track if you're going sort of all out speed, but half and full marathon training absolutely fits in the rotation. I'll give the Boston 12 a 2.8 out of three for the midsole. I think if they can shave off a little bit of foam here and there just to make the shoe that little bit lighter that'll turn the boston series into like a endorphin speed type shoe with a little bit more firm sort of dense feel a little bit more responsive than that one outsole now you can see a little bit of wear to the light strike 2.0 material here that's exposed in the midsole but otherwise the outsole is absolutely fantastic there's barely any wear whatsoever the continental area up front is pretty much untouched i found grip very assured in wet weather across my 100 miles of testing i would suggest it's probably not the ideal option if you're running on trails or anything with lots of debris but this is very much a road shoe and it's hard to sort of point that out as a negative aspect this time around Toe off, I think, is improved by the quite sticky continental rubber that you've got here in the mid to forefoot. And I think the spread of the rubber across the whole of the outsole really does benefit the shoe. Very dependable. It's just protecting the midsole areas. And I think that's going to enhance the usability of the Boston 12 quite a bit. I'm glad to report that there's no rod damage anywhere. I've got no sort of broken rods here and also no issues with rocks or debris getting caught up in here it's quite a large cutout really but amazingly nothing ever seems to get caught in there i think we're going to run on gravel or something that's probably going to happen but i wouldn't really recommend that shoe for that type of terrain very few models that this good after 100 miles as such i'm going to give this one a 2.9 out of 3 for the outsole only reduced by the initial deterioration of the exposed midsole there and it's a little bit hard to clean here unless you steal someone's toothbrush value now so i paid 119 pounds for this one when it first released i think that's amazing value really considering how the shoes held up it's actually quite astonishing when you consider the wealth of other options out there that are vastly more expensive than this one even at retail price of about 140 pounds the price i paid for it, it's a little more than a daily shoe these days i think there's way more in the tank with this one for usability rather than just sort of short range daily running i think it's the sort of shoe that can fill multiple spots in your road rotation as well on my initial reviews i have to speculate a little bit about the longevity and possible durability of the shoe but i don't see any problems whatsoever with the boston 12 from that aspect at 100 miles i think i'm going to get hundreds more miles out of this one i'll certainly still be utilizing it for a while and don't forget it's only gotten better as time has gone on as those foams have started to sort of free up a little bit how many shoes actually get better with age well not very many some have their flames quickly extinguished as soon as you get to about 100 where this one's actually really starting to reach its peak so best boston in ages definitely worth picking this up over the zoom fly 5 i think it's a good match for the softer midsole yet slightly more padded and bulky upper on the puma dv8 nitro 2 and it's vastly more stable than the endorphin speed 3 i think if you want consistency from your shoe and perhaps something you can even race in and train in too, then the Boston 12 is probably worth a look. I'll give it a 2.9 out of 3 for value after 100 miles. All I can say is with this one, if they can make it a touch lighter, I really feel that'll benefit the shoe. I think it'll bring the Boston back into that sort of race category that it used to be in a few years ago. Superb design, and with some careful tinkering, it could be, you know, like a budget Adios Pro 3. If I total the scores up correctly, that gives us 11.4 out of 12 after 100 miles, for the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 12.
I think my initial review is pretty spot on. The shoes only got better actually over time. If you've picked up the Boston 12 and really enjoyed it, or perhaps it hasn't lived up to your expectations, let the runners and I know down in the comments. Very quick musical interlude for you today. If you're in the UK and you can get the BBC iPlayer or you can access it, go and check out a recent radio broadcast, which has also got some visuals to it, from Johnny Marr. He was in the Radio 2 piano room and they had a full orchestra in there playing with him and it was fantastic. He did some different versions of some of his songs. I think Easy Money's on there. He also did a cover version as well of The Passenger and a cracking version of Somewhere as well. A reworking of the song, which recently came out on his sort of best of. It sounds brilliant with the added strings and the extra backing vocals and things. Really elevated the song, kind of almost made me wish that he'd release that version. I think it's possibly better than the single. There's some cool interview bits and some questions in there as well. The guy's just a bit of a legend. Definitely worth checking out. Johnny Marr over on the BBC iPlayer. You should be able to find it if you search. Thanks for tuning in people. Hope you enjoyed today's review. Please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.